So in most electric unicycle reviews, people talk about speed or range or build quality, but I feel like if you're kind of new to the sport, uh, it's kind of difficult to understand the difference between like smaller or lighter and heavier wheels because it's much bigger than just like, oh, the Sherman goes faster. It will actually feel different. I haven't ridden the Sherman, but I'm pretty sure it will feel very different to an Emotion V8. And so I wanted to make this video to explain you what can you expect when you pick a lighter or a heavier wheel and yeah basically go out like why are those differences there and what will you feel of course if you can it's much better to actually go and try it out so if you're in a rider group or if there's a store nearby i'd say just go out there and, and try it for yourself you'll understand very quickly but nevertheless let's go and let's also think about this and where those differences come from So I want you to really understand where the differences between different, like let's say classes of wheels come from so that you don't have to look at the review of an individual wheel to kind of start understanding how it would feel like to ride it. So every time I'll start with like a bit of a more theoretical part, let's say. So we'll say like, why is there a difference? And then we'll take some conclusions like how, like how does this actually apply? What is the difference when I'm actually riding the wheel? Now, of course, I'm no all-knowing saint. Uh, I'll probably make mistakes in this video. I'll probably forget some important things. So please like look in the comment section if there's any additions or corrections that have been made. Also, if you think that it's something people should know or if something that was wrong that I said, please mention it there and then we can make this a resource for everyone who is watching this in the future. Weight is a very big and important factor in how your ride is gonna feel on an electric unicycle because a monowheel balances itself, right? It's gonna keep the pedals straight and it's gonna do that by rolling forwards or rolling backwards. And so the speed at which it's moving depends on the position of the center of gravity of you and the wheel together as a whole. So the height of that center of gravity really depends on the the distribution of the weights of you and your wheel right if you let's say i have a hammer it's very easy for this to fall over if i hold it like this but if i put all the weight at the bottom it's going to stay very stable right so and that also gives you an indication of how much the wheel has to work in order to keep that balance but electric unicycles don't get heavier because people add bricks to them. They get heavier because people add bigger motors and more battery. So that's actually a good thing because a heavier wheel will need more motor power and more batteries to be able to drive the higher weight. So it's actually very good, right? That brings us to our first conclusion, a concept that we'll call torque ease of access. So a lighter wheel has less torque because the motor isn't as strong, but it's very easy to move that center of gravity because the wheel is light and you need a bit less leaning to make it do the same thing. A heavier wheel usually has a stronger motor, but it also can go harder, can go faster. I feel this because um, I started with a Inmotion V8S, just still have, and now I also have an Inmotion V11 since a few weeks. And so now I'm starting to get used to the V11, which is heavier and it requires more leaning for me for it to do the same thing. It's much easier for me to overpower the V8S, right? So I need to be very careful. And this is one of the reasons why I would also recommend a lighter wheel for beginners because you're really, uh, you're really forced to learn the limits, to learn to feel the limits of the wheel. And you, you learn that there are limits before you're going 50, 60 kilometers an hour. So I think that's a very good thing when you're learning to ride the electric unicycle. Secondly, the wheel you ride should depend on your body weight. Because again, it's this concept of the height of the center of gravity. And it means that if you are heavier, you require less leaning to move that center of gravity and to make it accelerate or break when you're moving backwards. 
So it's a lot easier for you to overpower the motor. So I weigh 75 kilograms, so I'm like, I don't really worry about the weight because I'm relatively light, but if you're like 80 kilograms or above, then you really need to consider your weights and choosing a wheel, right? Very like heavier people on my Inmotion V8S, they're just gonna drain the battery instantly and they're gonna really be at risk of cutting out because it's so easy for them to ask too much of the motor. It's relatively easy for me, right? So for someone heavier, it will be too easy, basically. And finally, what do they feel like? So a, a lighter wheel is very easy to push around to yeah, to accelerate and to brake, but also to rotate and to lift so if you want to jump with it or whatever. A heavier wheel feels a lot more smooth and controlled and it'll balance itself more because the, the bigger weight, the larger wheel, uh, give it a bigger gyroscopic effect, which makes the wheel go upright by itself, kind of. So it's really... Yeah, it, they, they're different, but I feel like they're different for different purposes. I ride around in the city center in Brussels here a lot, and when I'm doing that, I'm not, I don't take out my V11, just because the V8 is a lot easier to just go in between places, to brake hard, to just move around, and it's, it's very comfortable on it as well, because I have it for a long time. Uh, but the V11 feels to me more like more like a cruiser. It's it's easier to go long distances. It can go faster. You don't have to push as much to make it go fast. And it's also just very smooth. You just kind of push it, and it's like, and you feel like it has a lot of power. While on the V8s, you you feel the limits. Yeah. Again, I would say like really try all the different types of wheels so you so you know what feels best for you. I have a friend that uh, bought a wheel and she. Uh, she tried out the V8 and then she tried out the V10. The V10 is a little bit heavier, right? And it has a bit stronger motor. And she liked that one a lot more, which I can understand. It's it's a lot smoother, it feels calmer to ride. Also, I feel like heavier or bigger wheels are easier to ride slowly. Because uh, they kind of... They don't, they don't switch around as much. They just kind of stay going straight. So... Riding really slowly feels like it's easier for me on a bigger wheel. But where the rubber really hits the road is, of course, the tire. <laughs> okay, seriously, though, it is a very important factor, right? If you look at the diameter of the rim of a tire, the outer diameter, and if you take then the width of your tire, if you take all that together, you get a total volume of air that you have within the tire. And so if there is more space in the tire, that means that the air inside can move around much more easily, which will cushion and cover up all the imperfections in the road. So a tire that has a bigger volume will have a smoother ride. If the pressure in your tire is lower, then there is more room for that air to move around throughout the tire. So that will again make your ride more smoother. That gives us two conclusions. The first is that a larger diameter tire will make your ride more smooth because a larger diameter immediately means a much bigger volume of air. Second, it's not just the diameter that counts. The difference between 16 inch and 18 inch wheel, you will definitely feel it, but there's also the width of the tire. For example, I've ridden the uh, Emotion V8S, the Emotion V10F, and the Kingsong KS16X, which each, all of them have a 16 inch tire, but the width of them is very different, and so they feel a lot different. Again, also the weight of them, so they get heavier. For the, uh, from the V8 to the V10 to the 16X, but also the tire gets wider, and so that both of those together make for much comfier rides on the bigger wheel like the 16X. The wider a tire gets, the more it will exhibit what we call train tracking. And train tracking is a phenomenon where the tire follows the shape of the road. So if you're a bit higher on one half than the other, then the tire would really like 
tilts along. And so if you're riding a really wide tire, for example, in the 9BOT C10, it's a very extreme example, but for that wheel, you really have to adjust the way that you ride to let the, the wheel kind of do its own thing. Because if you don't, then you will get thrown around everywhere and you will just lose your balance. Finally, the tire shape can make a big difference. Now, I'm, I'm not that much of a tire nerd yet, <laughs> uh, but when, uh, one of the things that I really like and I find interesting is when you look at the, the profile of a tire, then you can see how hard or how easy it will be to turn. So if your tire is, if it's narrow and if it's very round, then it's, then turning it is very smooth because you're, you're rotating and the tire can just keep the same type of contact with the road as you tilt the wheel to turn around. On the other hand, if your profile of your tire is much more flat, then you have to push it a lot to make the same kind of turns. That's why I've heard people who've liked the 9BOT C10 also like the uh, S22, the Kingsong S22, because the tire isn't as wide as the Z10, but it is, it is pretty like, what you call this, shallow, right? So it's not very curved, it's more like this. And so, in that way, it feels a bit more like a wider tire. There's also a difference between off-road and, and on-road tires. Uh, the de facto standard off-road tire is the knobby tire, so it's a tire with like, little knobs on it. And an interesting thing there is that usually the, the knobs are in straight rows, which means if you look at the profile, there's like there's a, there's a knob, and then there's another knob, and then there's another knob, and, and in between there's like empty space. So when you're turning you kind of it, it feels like you're not really turning except as you reach a certain angle then it you're at this empty space in the in the tracks and then it suddenly jumps and um tilts much further so that's i think it's a that's a weird thing i haven't used it like the veteran sherman has it but i've heard a lot of people like talking about like this is a it, it turns weirdly but it has a lot of grip so that's kind of the trade-off on that off-road tire. Adam from Wrong Way has a much more extensive and detailed video about tires specifically, so it's a good next video to watch if you're interested in this topic and want to see more advanced stuff. I, I'll link it down below. Okay, we've talked about different classes of electric unicycles and the way they feel different. Uh, the most important thing for you to remember is that Heavier wheels will feel smoother, but they will be, you'll need to push them harder to get around. If you're new to electric unicycles, be sure to watch my video on everything you need to know about electric unicycles. Good title, right? <laughs> if you like this video, if you want to see more of it, make sure you subscribe. If you like the video, then you're telling YouTube that you like this, that hence the name like, and so it'll know to recommend you other videos like this or when I make videos like this in the future. If you want to add anything, if you want to make any comments, there's a comment section. Let's all get together there and make this a really good resource for everyone. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.